Welcome to another video by your friend, Matthew. Um, it's January 2023, New Year. Januarys are already slipping by rapidly. It's hard to believe that half of the month is already over. Um, and during my travels, during the holidays, I was finishing up this book called The Spell of the Sensuous by David Abram. Beautiful book. Honestly, one of my favorite books I've ever read, to be quite frank with you. And instead of, um, you know, just like describing the book, I'm going to read some of my favorite passages from the book. So, let's get started. This experienced solidity is precisely sustained by the continual encounters with others, with other embodied subjects, other centers of experience. The encounter with other perceivers continually assures me that there is more to anything or to the world than I myself can perceive at any moment. Besides that which I directly see of a particular oak tree or building, I know or intuit that there are also those facets of the oak or building that are visible to the other perceivers that I see. I sense that that tree is much more than what I directly see of it, since it is also what the others whom I see perceive of it. I sense that as a perceivable presence, it already existed before I came to look at it, and indeed that it will not dissipate when I turn away from it, since it remains an experience for others. Not just for other persons, but as we shall see later in this chapter, for other sentient organisms, for the birds that nest in its branches, and for the insects that move along its bark, and even finally, for the sensitive cells and tissues of the oak itself quietly drinking sunlight through its leaves. It is this informing of my perceptions by the evident perceptions and sensations of other bodily entities that establishes for me the relative solidity and stability of the world. Quite beautiful. On the contrary, my finite bodily presence alone is what enables me to freely engage the things around me, to choose to affiliate with certain persons or places, to insinuate myself in other lives. Far from restricting my access to things into the world, the body is my very means of entering into relation with all things. I dig it. Only by affirming the animateness of perceived things do we allow our words to emerge directly from the depths of our ongoing reciprocity with the world. Good. From the magician's or the phenomenologist's perspective, that which we call imagination is from the first an attribute of the senses themselves imagination is not a separate mental faculty as we so often assume but is rather the way the senses themselves have of throwing themselves beyond what is immediately given in order to make tentative contact with the other sides of things that we do not sense directly with the hidden or invisible aspects of the sensible and yet such sensory anticipations and projections are not arbitrary. They regularly respond to suggestions offered by the sensible itself. The magician, for instance, may make the magic palpable for the audience by following the invisible coin's journey with the focus of his own eyes and by imaginatively feeling the coin depart from the one hand and arrive in the palm of the other. The audience's senses, responding to subtle shifts in the magician's body, as well as to the coin, will then find the effect irresistible. In other words, it is when the magician lets himself be captured by the magic that his audience will be most willing to join him. Interesting. This is not to deny that the senses are distinct modalities. It is to assert that they are divergent modalities of a single and unitary living body, that they are complementary powers evolved in complex interdependence with one another. Each sense is a unique modality of this body's existence, yet in the activity of perception, these divergent modalities necessarily 
intercommunicate and overlap. It is thus that a raven soaring in the distance is not, for me, a mere visual image. As I follow it with my eyes, I inevitably feel the stretch and flex of its wings with my own muscles, and its sudden swoop toward the nearby trees is a visceral as well as a visual experience for me. Amen, sir. The patterns on the stream surface as it ripples over the rocks or on the bark of an elm tree or in a cluster of weeds are all composed of repetitive figures that never exactly repeat themselves, of iterated shapes to which our senses may attune themselves even while the gradual drift and metamorphosis of those shapes draws our awareness in unexpected and unpredictable directions. Merleau-Ponty comes in his final writings to affirm that it is first the sensuous perceptual world that is relational and web-like in character, and hence that the organic interconnected structure of any language is an extension or echo of the deeply interconnected matrix of sensorial reality itself. Ultimately, it is not human language that is primary, but rather the sensuous perceptual life world whose wild participatory logic ramifies and elaborates itself in language. Wowzer. And I think I'm just going to end on this. I don't want this to get too long. The experiencing body is not a self-enclosed object, but an open, incomplete entity. This openness is evident in the arrangement of the senses. I have these multiple ways of encountering and exploring the world, listening with my ears, touching with my skin, seeing with my eyes, tasting with my tongue, smelling with my nose, and all of these various powers or pathways continually open outward from the perceiving body like different paths diverging from a forest. Yet my experience of the world is not fragmented, I do not commonly experience the visible appearance of the world as in any way separable from its audible aspect or from the myriad textures that offer themselves to my touch. When the local tomcat comes to visit, I do not have distinctive experiences of a visible cat, an audible cat, and an olfactory cat. Rather, the tomcat is precisely the place where these separate sensory modalities join and dissolve into one another, blending as well with a certain furry tactility. Thus, my divergent senses meet up with each other in the surrounding world, converging and commingling in the things I perceive. We may think of the sensing body as a kind of open circuit that completes itself only in things and in the world. The differentiation of my senses, as well as their spontaneous convergent in the world at large, ensures that I am a being destined for relationship. It is primarily through my engagement with what is not me that I affect the integration of my senses and thereby experience my own unity and coherence. Until next time. Peace.